So open your Bibles to the fourth chapter of the book of Mark and see, we, we'll see what the Lord has to say. Now, it's good to study this whole chapter. And, you know, the book of Mark is, is a short little book. Take the time just to just read the whole book. Do that with some things. You can do that with 1 John. It's, it's easy. But just read it and read it and read it and read it. And it'll begin to speak to you and there, you'll hear and see things that you haven't seen before. And, you know, as it said, he began to teach by the seaside. Well, there was a great multitude there. And, well, let's, let's just, let's begin to read there. He began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat there in the sea or at the lake. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land, and he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his darken, do doctrine, hearken. Now notice that says, hear Ken. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> Bill, I wasn't smart enough to come up with that. Gloria did. <laughs> Behold, there went a sower out to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth or no roots. Immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of, soil, of earth or soil. But when the sun was up, it scorched, and because it had no root, it, it withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yielded no fruit. Other fell on good grounds and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 60, some, some 30, some 60, some 100. And he said unto them, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have ears yes. to hear? Yes. You can have ears and not hear anything. Yes. Have, you ever, have you ever been sitting in a service? I, I know I have. And you think, glory to God but it's something you read over and over and over and suddenly what? You heard it, not with these ears, but these ears. And it got down in you and it became a revelation of that word and it's there forever. Glory to God. All right. And he said unto them is a candle I want, I want to go back. Well, we can go down to that. I want, I want to show you something right here. Verse 11. He said unto them, To you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Now, have you ever heard he moves in mysterious ways? Have you ever heard that? Where in the Bible is it? It was a poem. I don't like to quote poems. <laughs> People think that is in the Bible. He moves in mysterious ways and, it, and you know, it's pay and he can't know. That's not true. You can know. Now, let's go on over here to the 14th verse. This is where... Uh, and so seeing that they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? If you can't figure this one out, <laughs> then you're in trouble. <laughs> because the whole thing, all covenant living is based on this. The sower soweth the word. 
the subject of the entire teaching is the word. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, I put a little number one there. When they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard, that's number two, <clears throat> the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the Word's sake. Now, I, I, let me come down here. It arises for the Word's sake. So, a person hears that word yeah. and immediately receive it with gladness. Yeah. But then the devil comes along and says, no, 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 no. Yeah. no yeah. Don't pay any attention to that. Mm -hmm. That's a bunch of nothing. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know that ain't going to work. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Just get, off, get your mind off of the word. Mm -hmm. I want you to learn something about him. He doesn't care whether you go to heaven or hell. Just get out of the way. And make him a bit of difference. Because he hates you. There is no love in him. And don't let him find anything in you. Don't let him distract you from this covenant word. Now, let me remind you again. The reason it's called the Word of God is because it is His Word. It's His bond. My dad, A.W. Copeland, Aubrey Wayne Copeland. Whew. I'm telling you. <laughs> now, he kept his word. And he told, if he ever told me Kenneth, you do that again, I'm going to spank you, son. One more time, and it is over. <laughs> it wasn't over now, now, don't you now, now, no, 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 no. One more time. And he wouldn't tell me when it's coming. <laughs> and so it's hanging over me. That, that was suffering. That was worse than the punishment, man. <laughs> He, he didn't spank me but a few times, but I still remember it. Mother was a switcher. <laughs> but between the two of them, they got the job done. Now, if you understand anything about the life insurance business, the, the salesman, the, the, in talking about a life insurance premium, money, the salesman will get the biggest part of that first commission. But then after that, when that policy renews, then that salesman gets a part of that. And that's called renewals. Then you become a manager then you get part of their commission and part of their renewal comes to you. <clears throat> so, National Old Line Insurance Company in Little Rock was a, was a small but very, very strong old, old line legal reserve company. So a man by the name of Taylor bought it and he appointed as president a man by the name of William Darby, Bill Darby. Now, my dad went to work for them. <laughs> they, we lived in Abilene, and uh, the man came by, and my dad bought a contract on me. At that time, he was with Drawn's Business College. 
And he said, I like the looks of this. Anyway, so then we moved to Fort Worth. And um, as time went by, there was a man that was one of those original general agents that he, he, it was, he had the whole state of Texas. And then my dad went to work under him. My dad was a district manager. Anyway, let me say what this was. They're in the contract. If you left the company, but then you offered someone else, you start a new company and you offered a job to a manager to come with that new company, then you lost your renewals. Well, this man, his renewals were gigantic and he wanted those renewals to help start this new company. And so they got into a lawsuit to fight over it. This man had offered my dad $3 million plus stock to come go to work for him. So they called my dad and put him on the stand. Mr. Copeland, did Mr. So-and-so offer you a contract? He said, yes, he did. He got up and walked off. <laughs> That's the end of that. My dad got to keep his job. <laughs> I said, Dad, phew, how come you to do that? He looked at me and said, it would have been a lie. Turned around and walked on. But this was the man that when he went to the bank, his money went into one account and his tithe money went into another. He's a man of his word. God is not a man that he should lie. <laughs> ah! And that's the reason the devil will do everything he can to get your attention off of it. Persecution is because of the word. It's for the word's sake. Yes. Mm -hmm. To divide your attention and get it on your problems, get it on your pain, get it on the money deal, get it anywhere except on the word. But you and I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God had the right and authority to make you that. He made Abram the father of many nations. Napoleon was reviewing his troops. And he always, you know, he was a sm small man in stature, and he always rode a great big stallion. And he was doing, and this, and this, this horse bolted, and this young man just reached out and grabbed it. He said, thank you, Captain. He said, sir, I'm but a private. No, sir, you're a captain. You come up here and ride by me. He had the authority to do that. God made you the righteousness of God in Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that happened during World War II. One of my favorite books was God is My Co-Pilot, and then later they made a movie out of it. And Robert Scott uh, was going, getting on up in years and then all of a sudden, this, this, this war just is, is going. And so a senior officer here was, here was Bob Scott. 
a major. And his senior officer said, Scotty, I need you to be a colonel. No, it's okay, okay, he's a colonel. He had the authority to make him a colonel. He didn't earn his eagles. He needed him to be a colonel. God made you to be the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. I like that. And the more you think about it, he needs you well. He has the authority and, and the power to make you well. To make you prosperous. But only if you'll receive it. Now, what would you, what would you think about Major Robert Scott if he said, no, I don't want to be a colonel. I'd rather be a major. Yeah. I don't want that. <laughs> I, know, I know what he said. Well, forget it. I'll get me somebody that will. Yeah. Right. And you would, have, you, would have, you would have gone from a major back to a captain <laughs> somewhere down the line. Wow. You, get, you begin to demote. Yeah. Persecution is for the words sake to keep you out of the word. If he can keep you out of the word, he can keep you out of faith. And without faith, not anything is going to happen. Now there is something that looks like faith. It sounds like faith. It's a very positive negative. It's called mental assent. Yes, I believe that. Satan, you will just have to turn me loose. And in here you're thinking, yeah, but I don't think he's going to. Because your heart didn't agree with it. You're a pushover. <laughs> a man I knew very well. And he got, he got really mad at the devil. And I tried to get him off of it. I mean, he got mad at him. I'm not afraid of him. I'll tell you what. It was a matter of days. He had a heart attack. The devil just took him down. I'd like to kill him. Well, later on it did was part of, of what took him out. You don't have to get mad at him. If you want to do for that, I mean you'd be mad at him all the time. <laughs> what do you do? Look. We put the pressure on him yes. with the name yes. and the word yes. and the blood. Yes. Yes. You press. Yes. You press for the high calling. Yes. Glory to yes. God. Are we getting anywhere? Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Well, somebody say amen. amen. So that's the reason that this teaching right here is the kingdom of God. These are kingdom principles. So, now I want you to, I want you to notice this. They have no root in themselves. Well, now, if you go over to Ephesians chapter 3, we're supposed to be rooted and grounded in love. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's where, that's where the, the, the ground is on the Word and, and the roots are in, in, in love. And if you, go, if you just go down through here, love would have fixed all of this. These are they... I mean, this, look at this 19th verse. The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust or pressure that comes from other things entering in. Don't let it enter in. Amen. Choke the word. 
and you become unfruitful. No, no, no. Chokes the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Praise God. These are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear. That's number four. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? Listen now. For there is nothing, no thing, there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was there anything kept secret that it should come ab abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, You take heed what you hear. With what measure you measure, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath ears to hear, to him shall be given. He that hath not ears to hear, from him shall be taken even that which he has. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, should sleep and rise night and day, the seed should bring, spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. He doesn't have to know how. <laughs> he doesn't care. The ground knows what to do with the seed. And the seed knows what to do if you water it. That's the reason that if you put a post in the ground, it'll rot the bottom off of it trying to make it grow. <laughs> Amen. That's what that's all about. The ground thinks you can put it in there, I'm going to grow it. Well, the same thing is true with your heart. Whatever you put in there, it'll grow. And the words that get out in there will, will change your life one way or the other. Well, I just don't understand it. I just don't know what's happening to me. I don't know. Every time we get to go on a vacation, one of the kids gets sick. Dear Lord, I just don't understand that. It just beats all I ever saw. And every time we get ahead a little bit, You've said that, now you've got a crop. Now you have a crop. This hundredfold works. I'll give you an il illustration that the Lord gave me years ago. Here's a man's good mechanic, owns his own, own business, has, has good customers. And one of his best paying customers comes in and he said, I want you to tune my car. Whatever it needs, go ahead and do it. Okay. So he takes the spark plugs out. This is an eight cylinder car. And they're not bad. So he just cleans them and puts them back. But then he charges for it. And he doesn't pay any attention to that. Well, it's been a long time. I don't remember now what spark plugs are even cost anymore. Anybody know? You know, Tom? Eight dollars a piece. So eight times eight. Sixty-four. <laughs> Here's sixty-four dollars. Times a hundred. Sixty-four hundred dollars. So he goes along here for a while and he comes in one day. And he says to his wife, and he, he goes and washes his hands to get ready for supper, and he just slops down in his chair. He said, I'll tell you, I don't understand it. She said, why? What's the matter? He said, that compressor went out again. I'm going to have to buy another one. 
She said, what's it going to cost? I was somewhere around $6,500. Come on. It works. And it will come back around and bite you. Since he doesn't know the source of the problem, he will continue to do it. If he ever finds out the source of the problem, he'll turn it around. All he had to do was tell that man, uh, sir, I just cleaned those plugs and put them back in there. There's nothing wrong with that. That's $6,400 he wouldn't have lost. This is the way of life. Not a way of life. This is the way of life. This is, and, and politicians don't understand it, but it works all the time. I really want that to get through because this is heaven's economics. Right on the other hand, what we sow with a willing heart. I wish we had time to, to study that. There was one king did everything that God told him to do. I mean, he did it all, but he did it without a willing heart. There was another king that fouled up and he fouled up and he fouled up, but he had a willing heart and God made up the difference. Now, I'm going to get this home to me. <laughs> we were in Australia, and we would, you know, and we were there for, for weeks, all across the country. Really enjoyed it. And, um, and then we would, you know, by the time we'd get in at night and go to bed, then we'd get the morning news from the U.S., all kinds of problems. Oh, there was Jim Baker and there was Jimmy Swagger, and I know them both and both of them dear close friends of mine and I know what's behind those cases. Jim Baker was not guilty. There was a judge and a prosecuting attorney that were after him. And later it was turned around. But you didn't hear that part. And right there, the Lord said inside of me, when you get home, I want you to go on a daily broadcast. The body of Christ needs it and the nation needs it. I thought, oh, what? Oh, no. No. I argued all the way <laughs> that on that 747 all the way back. We got the United States and got in our airplane. I argued, I argued, I argued with Gloria. And she just said, well, you know, you know. So I called my spiritual father, Oral Robertson. He said, Kenneth, it's so daily. Well, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> I did want you. And I, I, was, I, I didn't have any good sense about what I was doing anyway. I, I thought, I thought I was supposed to preach all the time and I stay exhausted all the time. Well, I'd go in there and I wouldn't smile until it turned the camera on. And one day I, I just looked at it and I just said, I quit. And I got up and walked out of there. Well, our producer said, well, what are we going to do? And Gloria was in the studio and that's when she said, I'll do it. Now, you have to understand, Gloria was so timid and so shy that she didn't even like to talk to people. We went to a meeting one time and, and, uh, and the pastor of the church and back in the green room there in the, in the speaker's room, he said, Sister Gloria, I'd, have, I'd like to have you stand up and greet the people. She said, no, sir, I don't do that. And so we got out there and she was sitting there in front with the pastor's wife. And he said, Sister Gloria, would you greet the people? She stood up and said, I told you I don't do that and sat back down. 
And then she was so embarrassed. <laughs> she, it hurt her so bad. She said, I'll do the TV. Oh. So, I, uh, <laughs> and it was, I struggled with it and struggled with it and struggled with it. And, um, uh, Then, hang on a second. I was over studying the blessing and the curse. This is some time later. Twenty-eight. 44, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall you sh be the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come on thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till you be destroyed. Because you hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments, and his statutes which he command thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign, and a wonder upon your seed. For it, because, uh, oh, 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 because you serve not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. And the voice of the Lord rose up on the inside of me, and he said, you haven't had any good thing to say about daily television since the day I told you about it. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I said, I don't blame you. Now the day, now some of you may remember this. It's been some years ago. I walked in that studio. I was so glad to get in there. And I was on there by myself. And I sat down at that little table we have there, you know. And I just sat down there. And I said, uh, you know, um, uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory Broadcast. And I love daily television. And I just got up and danced around that table. And I've been in love with it ever since. It changed the whole thing. It changed everything about that broadcast. It's, I want in there. I, w I want to be a part of it. And it just made all the difference. And so over there in Exodus 23, 25, you shall serve the Lord your God. I wrote it right in there with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. <laughs> And I, I have to say, I have been enjoying the abundance of all things. My bills are paid. <laughs> abundance of all things. Glory be to God forevermore. So, and we'll finish this up now in the book of Mark. But that's what this, if you study this teaching here, that's the reason he said, if you understand this, you can understand it all. Amen. He should sleep and rise night and day. The seed should spring up, grow up. He knows not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth immediately, he puts in the sickle. Well, that's with your mouth. Because the harvest has come. Thanksgiving and praise. Amen. Amen. But now, wait a minute. You've sown your seed. And you're happy about it. And you go along here a few days and don't see any results. Don't dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> don't dig it up and see if it's growing. Right. You just killed it. Yeah. Or you just see that, little, you know, the, 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 the first little blade coming out of there and say, come on. I want to tell you what my dad did to me. <laughs> out behind our back porch there in Abilene, there was an area right behind the kitchen door there that was kind of open and, and uh, 
So I decided I wanted to plant some watermelon seeds. I like watermelon. So, <clears throat> so I got some, we had a water, we ate a watermelon, my dad and I used to, and we just, anyway, I won't go into all that. But so I planted watermelon seeds and my vine came up. I'd come home from school and look under that vine. I was so excited. Every day it started out a little old nubbin, you know, and then it grew and then it grew and then it grew and it, it got up about that big and I'd hold that vine up. I came in one day and lifted that vine and there was a whole watermelon under there. I thought, it's a miracle. <laughs> My dad bought a watermelon and put it under there. So, and we sat down and ate it and I said, there's something wrong with this watermelon. I said, what's the matter with it? I said, I planted a yellow seed and this is red. <laughs> you can't fool the seed. He fooled me, but you can't fool that seed. Because the color was in the seed. The faith is in the word. <laughs> oh, glory to God. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becomes greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Now, I suggest as you name your seed tonight. Don't name it watermelon. <laughs> name it grapevine. And it'll just grow up and become 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 greater. Amen. I was in a situation where I needed engine overhaul and <clears throat> oh, two engines needed to be overhauled on the ministry's airplane. And uh, naming the seed. And I heard Jerry F Savelle preach on that. Well, I knew about it, but I hadn't thought about it. So I wrote it down and took it with me. And back in the day, I, I would take uh, calculator tape. <laughs> and figure it up times 100. <laughs> and carry it with me. And I said, uh -huh, I'm getting towards the million flow here. I'd take that calculator tape with me and carry it in my pocket, take it out, that kind of thing. And so I wrote that down that night in that service. I named this seed engine overhaul. Well, I knew what the engine overhaul was. I knew what, I knew what it was going to cost already. So I named that, that seed. It was absolute. I don't go around telling people about things like that. Or like somebody that, you know, gets up right close to somebody and begins to pray, oh, God, you know how I need a new washing machine. You, you understand? You, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. You, that's just a religious con. I despise that. Anyway, didn't say anything to anybody about it. Just believe God. So what did I begin to say? Glory to God, my engines are overhauled. My engines are overhauled. Praise God. And every time glory, I'd see glory, I'd say, glory, those engines are overhauled. You know that? She said, I agree. They're overhauled now. Praise God. Well, heaven says they're overhauled. Because I've got a seed in the ground. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. There's a woman contacted me. This is while we were still in Oklahoma. She said, uh, would you, I, I, I would like for you to go over to this uh, assisted living place. She said, it's nice. And my dad is there. And, and he, he has a problem with his arm. But she said, Brother Copeland, I don't know if he's saved or not. So we made the right appointment. And so I walked in there and they announced. And he came down the stairs and he, that arm was there. So I just went to the, you know, to the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. And uh, if you believe in your heart, uh, you know, that Jesus raised from the dead and say it with your mouth, then you'd be saved. And, rather than, and he's got up now. Okay. <laughs> so I went out and got in the car and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I have sown the seed of the word in him. So I'm asking you to send laborers across his path. I'm asking you that that word rise up in him. I'm asking you that when he goes to bed, he dreams about it. I'm asking you when he wakes up in the morning, he can't think about anything else. I have sown the seed of that. And then so a few days later, she called me. She said, first of all, I, I want to apologize for my daddy for getting up and leaving you right in the middle of that. He was afraid you were going to pray for his hand right out there in front of everybody. <laughs> but he, he said, he called me and he said, you know, that preacher read me something. And he said, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And he said, I thought about it. And I went to bed and I thought about it. And I thought, you know, I don't know that I've ever done this or not in my life. He said, I just got out of bed and got on my knees and asked God to save me. <laughs> I, the Lord led me to sow that as a seed into his heart. And it took root and grew. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the sower sows the word. And as we receive our evening offering, we do so with great thanksgiving and praise. And again, sir, I ask you to reveal to the people what their part of this ministry is and they will be obedient to you and we will receive it in faith and love and that seed will grow and it will grow it will grow the financial seed will grow yes sir. yeah I'll, I'll do that you got a bill in your pocket any size it make a difference Give me one of those hundreds you got. <laughs> now, let me show you something. This is not the seed. This is the husk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You sow the seed and then you bind it to the body of Christ. You will never, ever get into the devil's hand again. Praise you will not God. minister Amen. to him or his crowd yeah. ever again. That's good. That's good. Like that. now, now, once it is sown, now it is in the hand of the angels. Yeah. It's in the hand of God. God. But that's merely the husks. And I've had to the distinct privilege of showing some pretty good sized husk. <laughs> but it started out with nothing. Taking buttons off of my shirt. But I promised God I would never let an offering occur that I didn't put something in there. Anything. I preached in the Navajo Indian Reservation. A man by the name of Kenneth Begishi. And um, 
He's Navajo. Well, he left and left, left the reservation and, and went to school and a lot, of, a lot of other things. And then he went back. And he just went out there in the sand and it, he just took a this sign and just wrote on it, White Post Church. Stuck it in the sand. Began to teach his people how to give. And I saw it. They would bring polished pebbles and put them in the offering container. And the, the prize, there's so many Native Americans prize that, that velvet shirt. Those things are, are expensive. And, and washed and cleaned and pressed and on the altar. By the time Jerry Savelle and I got there, that became White Post Church, Arizona. Because he taught those people how to give. And he said, when I came back and did that and started, he said, nobody in my congregation, he said, they either rode a horse or a horse-drawn wagon or they walked. And he said, now, the only people walk is because they want to. Because they said industry came in here and my, my congregation got the best jobs. He said, they all have trucks and cars and pickups and they're prosperous people. And it started with rocks. Amen. And now, Kenneth Begishi and his associate pastor was Pastor Bennett. And Elson Bennett was in that first meeting when Jerry Savelle and I were there. And he said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a faith man like Jerry Savelle and Kenneth Copeland. And he is. <laughs> Mighty man of God. Mighty man of God. And just for your information, my name is Wombly Huaste. Good Eagle Speaks. <laughs>